Hey guys, this is Julian of Julian Gray Media, and if you've been following my channel for the past few years, you'll know that I'm a huge advocate and supporter of this idea of a fully fledged, fully synchronized live show. Playing a song that has visuals completely synchronized to it, designed for that song, or having a light show that's completely matched to what you're playing, that's a dream come true for any artist, I think, that wants to do stage performances. In the past, I've done a lot of work with the Ableton and Resolum teams to synchronize Ableton live performances with visuals in Resolume. If those types of videos pique your interest, make sure to click on the link in the upper right hand corner right now so you can check out my most recent video on synchronizing Ableton with Resolume. I've also done videos on syncing Ableton with other Ableton clients as well as syncing Ableton with DMX lighting control. You can check out those videos on the channel as well. They'll be in that same playlist I linked above. But the one problem with a lot of the videos in the past is that they focused very heavily on the idea of a live performance. Using Ableton Live, maybe some instruments, triggering clips and that sort of thing. But I know full well that a lot of the fans of this channel who are very EDM centric, electronic music centric, house music centric, or even fans of my own music probably aren't using Ableton Live to perform it's a little bit more ambitious and it takes a lot more setup process. I know a lot of you out there are predominantly DJs on stage. Now for my most recent tours, I haven't gone through the effort of building out an Ableton set or a touring setup that I can bring around. And I've been using a lot of Pioneer CDJs. I don't want them to have to switch out the entire setup of the stage just for one set. So this is a subject that is very personal to me as well, and it's something that I've wanted to teach for a long time but didn't know how. So I'm proud to finally say that I've cracked the code on syncing Resolume with Pioneer CDJs, which is the industry standard for most DJ performances. This software isn't exactly new, it's been on the market for a few years now, but it's been reserved for some of the biggest acts in dance music like Zed, Steve Aoki, and artists at that sort of scale. If you do research on the software, it's very unexplored, and it's something that needed a video explanation. So I wanted to take the time today to explain to you how to use this software. It's called Show Control to connect your Pioneer CDJs or anything in the Pioneer Link universe with Resolume and to have perfectly synced visuals for your live performances performed DJ style. So without any further prologue, let's hop on my Mac and get the process started. If you enjoy this video, consider supporting me on Patreon for exclusive perks including project file downloads, tools for your creative process, early access to videos, and more. Click on the card in the upper right hand corner for more information. Awesome guys, so now as you can see we are on my Mac. This is a 2018 Mac Mini. If you're going to be running visuals, I encourage you to get something a little bit more powerful, maybe a Mac Pro or one of the new M1 MacBooks. Graphics performance is really important to decode the DXV codec that you use in Resolume. If you haven't seen my video on syncing Ableton with Resolume, it might be a good idea to check that out at the link in the upper right hand corner right now, just so you have an idea of how Resolume works, how to set up Resolume, and getting your clips ready for Resolume. Now you may be wondering why I'm bringing up Apple computers for graphics performance, because that's a huge oxymoron. Anyone doing intensive rendering work or 3D graphics will tell you immediately the worst solution is to buy a Mac. It's much better to build a custom PC with this sort of thing, maximizing your raw performance with, let's say like an Intel i7 or i9 for now, and most notably an Nvidia graphics card. But unfortunately, Show Control, which enables us to link Resolume Arena into the Pioneer Link universe, is a Mac exclusive program. So if you intend on running Resolume and Show Control on the same machine, which I think is absolutely viable. Show control is not that dense of a program. You're gonna to have to use a Mac. And because of that, the only real options you have are a MacBook Pro, a Mac Pro. If you really wanna be that guy, you could bring an iMac in. But those are the options that you have if you wanna use show control. Now, if you do have a separate Windows client for the sake of graphics rendering horsepower and you still wanna use it for your Resolume performance, you can make this work, you just have to use a Mac client in between. So you'll be patching the CDJs into your Mac and then sending SEMPTE audio and OSC data out of your Mac into another client. I think this is a little bit convoluted. I would personally just get a, you know, the best Mac you can buy to accommodate both of those things rather than introducing another 
uh, room for error in a physical SMPTE line from let's say a show control Mac and a Windows Resolume client. But that's just me. If you already spent $2,000 on a, on a balling Windows computer for running Resolume, you can still make this work with you know a $50 MacBook Pro from 10 years ago. It's still gonna work. It's just a little bit more dicey. Introducing another computer is never a great idea, but you can make this work. I just wanted to preface this whole video with saying that you need a Mac to make this work because Windows does not have a version of Show Control yet. For whatever reason, I think Show Control relies on a lot of the internal MIDI mapping that Mac OS has built in, which is outlandishly better than the Windows offering. And its inherent reliance on core OS features might be the reason why Show Control hasn't been ported to Windows yet. But I couldn't tell you. We're gonna start this off with a list of things you will need to get this to work. It's actually much easier to get this to work than to get Ableton Sync to work. First of all, you need Show Control, which is either a monthly subscription through Show Control's website, or you can do a one-time buyout of a license. You need at least the second tier of Show Control. I believe it's called the club version, which allows you to use LTC or SMPT signal, which is in what enables the entire synchronization process between Resolume and the CDJs. You obviously need CDJs. I'm assuming that if you're doing this, you probably already have CDJs. Don't fret though, if you don't have CDJs at home and you're touring with CDJs like a lot of artists, including myself, you can use a CDJ emulation within Show Control which allows you to do your programming at home, even if you don't have you know, a $3,000 pair of CDJs and a Nexus uh, mixer as well. And then third is obviously Resolume Arena. You'll also need an audio aggregate device like Soundflower. I suggest using Black Hole because it is essentially the new 2019 version of Soundflower. It's free. And what it enables you to do is to route the output of one audio workstation into the input of another. Consider this like a digital cable that goes you know, out of Ableton into Resolume or out of Show Control into Ableton, for example. It's a way to send audio around in your computer without going out and in through audio devices. So once you've installed Show Control, Resolume, and black hole or a comparable aggregate audio device. The setup process is actually pretty simple and we'll go through that right now. So first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and launch Show Control and I'm also going to launch Resolume Arena 5. And here is the window you're presented with when we load into Show Control. We'll go into Resolume in a minute. The first time you load into Show Control, you will probably have to go to the licenses page, log in with your account username and ID that has your license on the website, and then you can log in and then register your machine to your current computer. It's gonna look like this. So like show control live for you, it might be club or what have you, and you do register computer, it'll now be synced to this computer ID. We're not gonna worry about the network page or any of its subsidiary pages yet, nor are we gonna worry about any of these other tabs. They're pretty self-explanatory. So we'll go back to menu. Obviously, we're gonna start things off by launching show control. And this is what you're presented with when you first launch the program. Before we get into anything else, I'm gonna go through the setup process of getting this working with Resolume. One of the biggest, most annoying issues of Show Control is that there is no rescaling the window. So unfortunately, we're dealing with this full-size window for the duration of this video. That's why I have hiding on on my dock so that we can actually you know, get as maximum screen real estate as we can here. But what we're gonna do is we're going to go to the utility page on Show Control. And when you go to the utility page, this is like your general settings for inputs and outputs of the program. We're going to configure some things here and I'll explain what we're configuring as we go along here. First and foremost, you have DAW audio out. So this is if any audio is generated from show control, whether that be you're playing back a song, you're using an internal Pioneer CDJ emulation or something like that, you have to use DAW audio out to hear what you're doing. So I suggest enabling it first up here you know, set your DAW volume to whatever is preferable and then set your audio output device. In this case, this will be my Duet USB, which is my speakers are connected to that. With our LTC, this is the SEMPTI channels and there's three SEMPTI channels to show control. You have a master, an A and a B. I think that the club version, which is the cheaper version, might only have the master, which is okay because we're actually only going to utilize one SEMPTI sync channel 
out of show control here. The layer A and B options let you have separate syncs for separate songs playing at a given time so let's just say that you had a track loaded on your first cdj and a track loaded on your second cdj and you want to play both visuals in sync at the exact same time and crossfade between them as the dj is mixing you can do that with multiple layers for the sake of this tutorial we're only going to use one empty sync i think this is going to be the most applicable to most novice users of this program. So we're going to enable LTC master mode right here by clicking enable. And then we're going to set the volume of this relatively low. Now this is important because if we overdrive this output and it comes in too hot in Resolume, Resolume actually won't recognize the signal as SEMTI. Any distortion of the SEMTI signal will destroy the time code and it won't be recognizable by whatever program you're using, whether it be Resolume or what have you. So it's a good idea to keep this moderately low. And likewise, if if you're for some reason not receiving SEMTI signal from show control into Resolume, it could also be that you're sending not enough volume through. Now for our master output, we're going to send channel one through our audio aggregate device that we described earlier. So I have Black Hole 16 channel installed. I'm going to send SEMTI signal through channel one of 16, obviously, on my Black Hole 16 channel. And what this is, is basically Whenever I send SEMTI out of show control, the LTC signal is going out of channel one on black hole 16 channel, and it's sending that LTC signal over into the black hole that is black hole. So for now, this is what we're gonna set up in audio. We're not gonna mess with MIDI in. This is for actually using a MIDI controller to control show control. Not gonna do that yet. And then for global, I'm gonna set the SEMTI mode to 30 frames per second. It's a little bit more accurate than 25 frames. So I always generally run with the 30 frames per second option here. Not gonna mess with any of the other things. Just wanna make sure that we're running at the same SEMTI mode in show control that we are in Resolume. And we're not gonna deal with any of these either. This is for more advanced features that utilize show controls web server. Okay, we're gonna close this out now. And in theory, this should all be set up at least on the audio side of things. Let's go ahead and take a look at network really quick. And I just wanna make sure that OSC is configured. OSC allows us to send trigger data. So if something happens in show control, it can trigger a action in Resolume. Let's say when I press play on a track or it reaches a certain place in the track, on show control, then we can trigger a clip to go off in Resolume. And to set this up, all we're gonna do is go to OSC output enable, make sure this is checked. And then we set our target IP and port based on what you will see in Resolume here in a second. The general default port is 7000 and your IP is gonna be the IP of your computer. You'll see it in Resolume in a moment. This is something that you have to configure to make sure that you're you're able to send trigger data from show control to Resolume. Okay, and we're not gonna deal with anything else in here. Pro DJ Link is something you'll deal with when you're actually on location with CDJs, but in my experience, it plugs and plays into the program and you don't have any issues as soon as you plug this into your CDJs. Okay, really quickly, we're gonna dive into Resolume Arena and make sure our settings are good here too. So we're gonna go to Arena Preferences. We're gonna go to the audio pane and then we're gonna set the same output as the show control for our audio output. We're not actually gonna be using audio output for Resolume. I don't think anybody really does, but it's a good idea to just set this as the same output as in show control, just in case you know you have any videos that have sound. The more important one is setting your input device, and this is the device that, you know, your aggregate device I told you to install earlier, and the same one that you're sending out the SEMTI in show control. So we're gonna select black hole 16 channel because that's what I use. And then for our SEMTI timecode input one, we're gonna grab input one. This is what input we use in show control. So if you are in show control and you selected for your master output, let's just say you selected channel two here instead of one, you can do like, you know, 16 if you want. You just set this to whatever input you selected as your output in show control. Don't worry about timecode two. This is again for that system where you can use multiple time code inputs at once. We're not gonna do that in this video and I'm sure after you figure out one, it won't be hard to figure out two. Then the only other setting we need to adjust in this video is OSC and you wanna make sure that OSC input is triggered. Your incoming port is the same port in show control and then your IP address is the same as what you put in the network settings on show control. You're gonna to wanna to copy this guy into this OSC output pane 
on show control. And that's really all the setup there is to it. It's that easy to get this going at least on a base level. Hey guys, I forgot to record this segment on video, but I just wanted to discuss the hardware setup process of setting up show control. So the whole process of getting show control running with your Pioneer Link network is to take an ethernet line from your Mac and run it into the network switch or router that your Pioneer Link network is plugged into. There's a diagram on the screen here. Really simple stuff. There's not much you have to configure in show control. In my experience, it's always plug and play. This also works really well if you're using a MacBook or a newer Mac that doesn't have a native Ethernet port. You can get a USB Type A or USB Type C Ethernet adapter and it works just the same. So now that we've gone through the initial setup process for Resolume and Show Control and linking them together with Black Hole, this next segment will be diving into Show Control and showing you the basics of how it works. So the Show Control interface might look a little daunting at first, but I promise it's not as complicated as you think it is. So there is four input channels down here at the bottom. This is correspondent to your four CDJ channels. Obviously, if you have this plugged into a Pioneer Link universe, like with four CDJs and a mixer of some sort, these panes down here at the bottom will directly reflect those four CDJs in real life. Simple enough to understand, I think. So above this pane here that represents each CDJ, you have these three buttons which correspond to three separate SEMTI channels. And when you, we were setting up in the, you know, the audio window here and you saw master out, layer A out and layer B out, we disabled layer A and B. So we actually aren't using A and B as SEMTI triggers. By clicking on A, we load it into SEMTI channel A. By clicking on B, we load it into SEMTI channel B. And if we click on M, that loads our master channel, which is the only SEMTI channel that we're actually gonna be using in this video. But if you wanted to, you know, you can actually use these three separate SEMTI channels for syncing visuals to multiple songs at once. Bear in mind though that the master channel is reliant on either A or B being loaded, so you actually can't use M as its own independent SEMTI channel. The M SEMTI channel relies on layer A, B, clock, or freewheel as a source, clock being, you know, a tempo. You can learn more about the clock and freewheel modes in the show control manual, but today we're gonna focus on the SEMTI channels up here. So if you're familiar with time code at all, this hours, minutes, seconds, frame section here will be very familiar to you. This is how SEMTI applications know what place in a song you are or what place in a performance you are in general, and it's the basis of all SEMTI sync. So I think that this window here is going to be easier to explain with a song loaded. So what I'll go ahead and do is go into our gear window here, which is the settings for this deck. Don't worry about any of these executor functions up here. What we're gonna do is just trigger internal. If you're using a CDJ link, you can use Pro DJ link. But as I said before, you can actually use an internal CDJ emulator, which is this guy right here, if you don't have a CDJ configuration set up at home. And we're gonna test this out on a real CDJ, don't you worry. But for the sake of the video, we're gonna be using this internal CDJ emulator just to make things easier. We're gonna hit OK Save, and then we're gonna press this button here, which is our load button for a song. So at this point, you're gonna to wanna to find the song that you want to sync visuals to, and it's the song that the DJ, whether that's yourself or somebody that you're VJing for is going to play. You're gonna find that exact file. So if they're gonna play this wave file live on stage, you're gonna to wanna to use the exact same one. I'm just gonna grab Cloud Generator. It's an easy one. It's one of my back catalog from my most recent Mousetrap EP. As you can see, it is loaded in the similar way to how it would look on a real CDJ. And if we hit play, as you can see, Assuming we had our DAW audio set up correctly in our audio pane, we're getting sound just like we would with a real CDJ. So we're gonna click A on Cloud Generator here, which loads it into deck one. And as you can see, if we press play, Sempty Channel A is now sending time code. Now if you remember, we're only receiving channel M, which is the master channel, in Resolume, and we're actually only sending M out of show control. So how do we map A to M? And you do that by selecting what source you want to use here on the master channel. So if we're playing this, and we click layer A, as you can see, now we are sending it to master channel. 
So I think this gives you a good idea of how to use the A, B, and master SEMTI channels. If you press A, it's gonna load the song that's playing on deck one to channel A, which in our case isn't sending anything out. And if we wanna use you know, this, this song on our master SEMTI, which is our master sync, we press M. And then it's loaded to both our master and then whatever is not loaded. So like B in this circumstance. We can also do, you know, load into A and then select A from our master menu. And now our master is then receiving the same SEMTI as channel A. So that means that whatever visual we play in Resolume will be synced SEMTI wise to channel A. And the reason this is important is because if we load in, let's say another song, I'm gonna set the second CDJ to internal mode and we'll load in another song here. I'll pick High Tide. If we play this song and we, we load it into A, it overwrites our other song in A, as you can see. But if we load into B, we can have both of these playing at the same time and then we can decide which one we're gonna use for our master. So let's say that our visual for high tide is going, we enabled the master, so it's playing on the master channel, and we wanna switch it over to Cloud Generator. All we have to do is press M on Cloud Generator, and now as you can see, the visual that's playing back will be Cloud Generator. So I know this might make a little bit of sense so far, but it always helps to show a visual aid to really you know, give you an idea of how this, this looks in practice. So what I'll do is I'll load in high tide and then in our arena file, I'm gonna just clear the composition here, I'll say new. And what we can do is we can you know, start bringing in our visuals here. So I'll go ahead and grab in my DXV visuals for the full song, I'll just use you know, high tide, that just happens to be my set intro. Then I'll bring in Cloud Generator as well, just because it's here. And the first thing I'm gonna wanna do in uh, Arena is to turn off the sound for the clips. You can't use Sempty with videos with sound for whatever reason, so you gotta make sure that you X those out. And then what you're gonna do is go to the clip, go to Sempty Sync, Sempty 1, and then we go to our, you know, Sempty Input 1 on both of these clips, and any clip that you add from this point forward, you're gonna wanna do that for. And then, assuming everything worked properly, if I play High Tide, it's gonna send the appropriate Sempty data to Resolume, and then we're gonna have a perfect synced visual. So then, as you can see, if we press play on High Tide, and then we press, you know, Master Sempty, it's gonna map high tide to either you know channel b or channel a depending on what's playing if i press play on cloud generator and then i press m it's going to map it to a and then switch our master to you know a as well but if we press play on high tide make sure that the layer b is selected on our master SMT layer and you know this is attached to layer b of course we go to arena assuming all of our setup was correct as you can see, we are getting a perfect SEMTI sync video and audio. If you have a VJ and a DJ duo, and you have one of you at front of house, and you know exactly the entire set list, and you know every song, and you know the visuals that correspond to every song, this is as far as you're gonna need to go. Basically, when a song is loaded on a CDJ, and you see that it's the active song, and it's the playing song, the VJ could be like, okay, high tide is playing, let me load it into the unloaded SEMTI channel and then we'll prime it. And then when the time is right, I'm gonna trigger layer A and that's gonna be the SEMTI sync that we're sending to Resolume. At the same time, I'm gonna grab you know, the clip that corresponds to that song in Resolume. And this is like the baseline setup and it's really all you'll need to get started with this. If you have a VJ team, and all you're trying to do is make sure that your visuals that you play are in perfect sync with what's going on on screen, you can do that very easily just by doing this configuration. Now when it gets a little bit deeper and a little bit more involved is when we start to use OSC triggers to automatically select, let's say when I play high tide and it reaches this point in the song, I want it to load a clip in Resolume and I want it to be in perfect time. And that's very achievable with OSC in Show Control and Resolume. And I'm gonna walk you through the basics of how to do that now. So if we go into Arena, you know, the way a VJ typically works is that they have these banks of clips here for certain songs or certain sections of the set. Every VJ is a little bit different, but you generally wanna, you know, subdivide your clips into chunks 
rather than have all of your clips in a horizontal line you know across the entire screen like this for your entire set some vjs do that but um, I, I noticed that most VJs, they wanna use different pages. Let's say like this is a page that corresponds to one album and this is a page that corresponds to a totally different type of visual. I encourage you to, if you don't have a VJ, think about this a little bit and work out the best way of sorting your clips. Let's say that you have like clips for this song is gonna be in bank one, uh, clips for the next song is in bank two, or like you can say clips that fit the aesthetic of this album will be in bank one, clips that fit the aesthetic of the album in bank two or of another album in bank two. And I encourage you to do this because when we start automating OSC data, it's very difficult to go back and change these things. So you wanna make sure that your arena template with all of your clips is exactly where you want your clips and exactly the right order of where you want your clips. So in this case, I know that both of these songs are from the same album. They're both from Eventide EP. So I'm gonna go ahead and rename this, you know, Eventide visuals. So then whenever I want to summon, you know, an Eventide visual, or if I play a song from Eventide, they can all be grouped within this window here. So, you know, I have Cloud Generator in there, I have um, Eventide in there. If I, if I ever do visuals for any of the other songs for this album, I can toss them in here and then we can sync them up perfectly. Let's say um, in a hypothetical situation here, we're playing High Tide and whenever I play High Tide, what I'm effectively trying to do here is in Resolume, I want to automatically select, let's say we're on a different bank here. We wanna automatically select this bank and then we want to select the visual correspondent to that song. So, I mean, this is this is bad. I probably should name this, you know, High Tide rather than Eventide Set Intro so that it's more obvious. But let's just use Cloud Generator as an example. Cloud Generator's clip is called Cloud Generator. In Show Control, the song is called Cloud Generator. So it's very foolproof. If we broke this down to like the exact things that we wanna do, when I load Cloud Generator and start playing it, I want in Resolume to you know select this bank and then I want to select this clip. And I want this clip to be loaded so that if I'm playing Semti that's related to Cloud Generator, it's not triggering you know some wonky placement in another clip based on the same Semti. Because Semti is inherently just what time you are in a song. It doesn't discern which song you're playing. So the way we can do this is by mapping those changes to OSC triggers. The easiest way I found to do this after scouring the internet, because there's not a lot of there's not a lot of instructional content for show control, is whenever I load high tide into the master channel, which is the master Semti sync channel. I, I I find this to be like the most obvious choice because if we said whenever we play High Tide, the DJ could be playing the song and it's not even mixed into the the audible spectrum yet. We we aren't hearing that song yet. So what I did, and I think is the most intelligent way to do this, is to map when this song is loaded into the master Semti channel, meaning that it's ready to synchronize whatever's playing. That's when we're gonna load the clip, and we can achieve this by going into the executor audio automations and show control. So if we go to the gear window here, now is the time to talk about the executors. So these are actions, OSC actions or commands that happen whenever you do one of these things. So if the DJ is playing the song and they press play, it's going to send a command and we can use this command to trigger, you know, trigger this clip for the easiest use. Or if we press Q, we can load some sort of effect. I don't know why anybody would want to do that but the options are there. So what we're looking for is not the deck control executors, we're looking for the song control executors. We wanna use executors related to the song. Whenever I load this song, then we're gonna trigger that clip. We don't wanna do you know, the high tide visual every time we, we load any song on channel B. So what we'll have to do is we'll go to set list, we'll go to new track, and this adds a track that we can program for. And we go to this gear window here, and then as you can see, we have the executor command for this track, but before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and load in the song here as well. So we're gonna hit the load in button, high tide again. Let's go ahead and go for that. And then you can say, update the metadata for this track. You can hit yes. As you can see, now we have high tide as a track that's you know programmable. If we hit okay, set list is like the entire bank of tracks saved within Pro Control. It allows us to you know program individual cues and things like that for individual tracks in Show Control. Let's go into gear, and then we'll go to executor command layer M, and this is what we want here. Rather than use you know the CDJs um, executors, we want whenever we load high tide as a track into layer M we're going to launch this clip. 
And we can do that here. So what we do is we go to the gear menu and this is a list of commands that you can trigger whenever you, you know, do the action related to it, the executor action. And in this case, it would be loading into layer M. We're going to do a plus button and we're going to do a OSC out, which is the type of signal we're sending. You can also do MIDI out, DMX out, Pro DJ Link out, which is like controlling your CDJs from the program, which is like crazy. If you're a developer at all, if you know anything about command line, you can see the potential of this. You can do all sorts of cool stuff by utilizing this. Whenever you load a song in, you can make, you know, some DMX light change a color or something. Like there's a lot of show automation potential here. But what we're gonna do is just use the OSC trigger and this looks a little bit daunting at first but don't you worry it's gonna be really easy we have to find the OSC address pattern related to whatever it is we're trying to do so if we go into arena and we know you know the order of operations in Resolume is you know we don't select the clip first because if we select the clip first then it could be in any bank we want to make sure we select the bank first so we have to find the OSC trigger that selects the bank and to do that you go to you go to shortcuts you do edit OSC, which is shift command O, and then you click on what you wanna map. And if you're you know, an Ableton user or any DAW for that matter, and you've ever mapped MIDI or a keyboard shortcut, it's the same kind of idea here. You just find what you want to automate, you click on it, and you say, you can find it in the bottom right-hand corner here. You say OSC input composition deck one select, copy that. And now whenever any program for that matter, but in our case, show control, sends this OSC trigger into Resolume via the OSC port, we're gonna you know, select that page. And that's exactly what we wanna do. So if we go into show control and we do that same process again, we go gear, we go to executor command, press play, I'm sorry, press plus, do OSC out, and then we send this command it's going to trigger that in Resolume. One thing I will say is you have to send a float value of one. This is like a one versus a zero. Zero is off, one is on. And if you hit okay and you hit okay again, now whenever we press the M button and load this into our you know, our master SEMTI channel, it's going to select that page in Arena. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll turn off edit mode, select a different page, and if we go into show control here and kind of pull it to the side, we should be able to do this. And I, I have talked to the show control team and they are working on fixing this non-scaling issue, which is I think the most annoying thing about show control right now. If we press M on high tide, as you can see, it selects the correct page and that's exactly what we want. Now from this point, you could do more commands in that same window for high tide. We can you know, add more executor commands beneath here. But rather than do it this way, what I like to do is, you know, go into our queue list, which is the third window option in show control here. And this allows you to set those executor events to certain times of the song. So let's say that you have multiple clips in a song and rather than, you know, exporting <laughs> a five minute video, you can export, you know, 10 little small clips and then, you know, in certain points of the song, you reference those clips. And this is really useful for things like if you have a full album that has similar art, but you don't wanna, you know, bounce the same video 10 times, you can trigger those same clips each time for different songs. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, um, we can leave the new cue, but we can hit another new cue. I always like to keep one at the start. Let's go ahead and move this forward like maybe 10 seconds. So when 10 seconds hits on the song, which is usually, you know, the DJ is probably not even playing the record yet, or at least audible on the house system. We're going to do a new cue. I'm just gonna call this like visual start. Maybe 10 seconds is too much, maybe like three seconds, five seconds, let's say. And then we can do command here, which is essentially the same window as before. It's an executor command. We do send OSC out. And then if you're a little bit keen eyed and, and you kind of grasp what we're doing here, hope you do, you can figure out exactly what we're gonna do next. We're gonna do shortcuts, edit OSC, grab the clip that we want. This is, you know, the high tide clip. And then we're just gonna grab composition layers, three clips, one, and copy it. Now make sure you don't select composition selected clip because that's whatever you have highlighted. It just so happens to be the clip that I have on. You don't wanna do that. You wanna grab the exact location of that clip. So bear in mind, because we're grabbing the exact location of the clip, if you move that clip in your arena file, you're no longer gonna be selecting that clip. So that's why I said in the very beginning to preface, make sure that you have your arena set up exactly how you want it before you start automating stuff because it's gonna be a nightmare to change once you do it. So we're, again, we're gonna copy that. We're gonna go back to show control. We go to visual start, we go to command, we go to the gear window, you do add 
send OSC out and we send this command as a float value of one. So in theory now, if we go ahead and load this into M and play it from the start, as soon as it reaches that queue, it's going to trigger the switch over to this bank and then trigger the clip. And if we press play, we should be able to see that. So M. And as you can see, it didn't work there, which is one of the, the pinnacle bugs of show control. If you are loading the track into the M channel, the master SEMTI channel, and it's already loaded, it's not gonna execute that executor command. So what we'll do is we'll just load in Cloud Generator really quick to overwrite it in M, and then we can press M again here so that you know it resets that and allows us to run that executor again. So executor M is selecting this, and then the queue for the, the track that we have loaded will trigger the corresponding clip. Now let's go ahead and press play. We'll press M, and as you can see, it loaded the bank and then the queue launch the correct visual. And if you want this to be sooner, you know you can set this to like, you know, a millisecond or whatever, and it'll still achieve the same thing. I just give it a little bit of buffer time just in case, you know, show control or Resolume's having a little bit of issues. And that's, that's the basis of how to do OSC triggers in show control. You can, you can do this as many times as you want. Like let's say that you wanted to, at a certain point, switch it to a different clip. Obviously these clips are full song clips that correspond to the visuals we have. If you didn't have this scenario, or if you just had like, you know, generic VJ clips, you can, you know, do more cues like this so that when you reach the drop, for example, let's say like, um, pretend that 10 seconds is the drop and we say like drop for the queue. We can make this, just copy this over here, add OSC out. Let's just do this and then select, you know, clip two instead, value one, which is the, you know, the next clip in line here. So now like, you know, when it reaches that drop queue, it's gonna trigger the next clip in line. You can see, I mean, it's, it's not rocket science here. As long as you have queues set up here and they're triggering those correct OSC values, you can you know, trigger as many clips as you want and do it wherever in the song you want. If you just press play, you know, that's starting on the, well, starting there on the correct click at five seconds. And then at 10 seconds, it's gonna switch over to Cloud Generator. So again, you can trigger individual clips within your bank this way so that you can, you know, utilize a clip for more than one song if you felt inclined, or if you have a very specific, you know, drop clip that you wanna use like three or four times in your entire set list, you can do it that way too. So in my testing of show control on a 2015 MacBook Pro, I realized that there's a small bug with the system I just described. Okay, so here, here's what I'm running into. I have a track playing, I have some cues lined up in show control for this track. All is good, but as you can see, when it loads a new deck, it takes a second to load the new deck. So like if we if we go to like this deck, for example, there, you see that moment of load? When you're switching banks to select, let's say an album's worth of clips, and then you select an individual clip within that bank, if you're running on a slower computer, a slower MacBook, I guess, there is sometimes, especially when you're running, you know, 4K visuals out of your laptop, a small delay between when a bank is loaded and then when all of the clips in the bank are loaded as well. So if you send, let's say, a trigger to grab the bank and then you simultaneously send a cue to cue a clip, if those are triggered at the same time, there might actually be an issue because you're gonna be triggering something that's not yet loaded. So Resolume doesn't know what to do with that and it actually doesn't end up triggering the clip. So I talked to the guys at Show Control about this issue and they agree that it's something that should be addressed. So their workaround for it is a new function that they're adding to a future version of Show Control. Hopefully it'll be implemented by the time this video comes out, but it allows you to add a delay in between commands in your executor window. So let's say you send the OSC trigger executor to select the bank correspondent to your album's song. Then you send a delay executor of like five seconds and then you trigger you know, the, the clip executor, the clip OSC trigger that launches the clip within the bank on Resolume. And I might do a follow-up video to this if needed, 
But it's something that I thought is worth mentioning for those of you who are going with this method of using banks and individual clips within the banks. It can run into issues if you're using an older MacBook. So definitely um, be on the lookout for that and make sure that if you're running on an older MacBook, you test this configuration out. To circumvent this issue entirely, if you're not comfortable with using the delay workaround that's about to be implemented into the next version of Show Control, you can always just keep all of your clips on one big bank. Again, I don't think it's ideal, and it's not something that should be the long-term solution because you're gonna end up with a million clips on the same bank. But for the time being, it is the most reliable way to get your clips to trigger without any sort of hiccups every single time. You can achieve this very easily just by putting all of your clips in the same bank in Resolume, then grabbing the individual clip trigger and using that on the executor command layer M trigger within show control instead of using the bank command and then allocating cues to each individual clip. Also, even if you are using banks, if you only plan on using one big clip per song rather than breaking it down on a clip by clip basis for different sections of the song, you can actually do all of your triggers within the single executor command load layer M. So if you actually go into the executor command of let's say one of these singles, let's use high tide as an example, we can actually stack these. So like OSC out one is like selecting the deck. Then we do like the new delay feature whenever that comes out of like four seconds to compensate for that weird, you know, load time. And then we send in another OSC trigger that will trigger the corresponding clip. So that's the basics of show control here. As you can see, you, you can do this for a ton of different tracks. The set list pane here is your entire library of tracks. And then once you do it one time, as long as you're dealing with original material, I'm assuming you're gonna be using the same song for the foreseeable future. Whenever you use that song and your DJ plays it out, it's gonna trigger the program that you've done in show control. The way I think this is used best is if you build this entire Rolodex of every single song you've ever released or every single song you release in the future and you stay on top of it and you do a program for each individual song. Assuming that you don't wanna do like a total overhaul for like a new tour or something, you can have a visual Rolodex of every single song so that whenever you play that song live, it has that correspondent visual. And I think that's, that's incredibly powerful. A few cool things to note here, if you are just getting started and you want to pre-populate your you know, set list window here with all of your songs, you can actually go and load in a set list from Pioneer Record Box. So you can actually load in your DJ set that you're about to play on a festival stage into Choke Control. And then you have all of your tracks predetermined. And then it's just a matter of going into each of them and assigning uh, executor commands and cues for each individual visual trigger in Resolve. But then at least you have all of your songs in a row rather than having to, you know, add them manually like this, which is a pain in the neck. Just as a quick example here, I'm gonna add in one more song just to show you how easy this is. We're gonna go to gear, we're gonna do load, and then I'll do cloud generator because we already have that loaded in the project and say yes for update metadata. Do executor command. This is gonna be largely the same as the first one because it's gonna be in that same bank. Remember the eventide bank is the deck. So I'm just gonna copy this data here into this data here. And that's gonna you know grab our eventide arena bank, which is here, that album. Then we can go back into show control, go into queue list. By the way, this loads it into the queue if you didn't figure that out. Um, by the clicks, I guess I didn't really show that. Or you could do it down here by pressing M and then it's loaded into the queue. And then we do new queue, we do command, and then you know we can select, you know this is clip two whenever we launch this. So uh, we'll do here, here, OSC out, paste, set this to clip two, because I know that that clip correspondent of my Resolume project is in you know the second row. And then we send value one, okay. And then, you know, whenever we reach, let's say like five milliseconds, cloud generator is going to trigger that clip. It's always a good idea to have a queue at zero just so you, you know, have a starting point. And I've noticed that it works more reliably when we do that as well. If we really quickly just, you know, the world's worst DJ said it right now. So if we, um, let's say M for this guy, and then we're going to, you know, M for this one. So it does the executor. What I'll do is turn off shortcuts as you can see, if we go in here and we click on, you know, play for high tide, load in, you know, our M, 
It's loading high tide and it's playing the clip correspondent to it. Skip ahead a bit. And then if we play cloud generator, it's gonna sound terrible, but um, press M. And as you can see, it selected cloud generator. <laughs> gonna stop high tide there. And then yeah, so you can see how easy it is to you know program songs like this. Load in a new cue, load in a cue at you know a few milliseconds in, and then have it trigger the correct clip. And then the executor command on loading the song into M, which is found here, has to be the correct bank. Now, if you want to you know circumvent banks entirely, you can ignore this whole step. But I highly suggest breaking this down by bank so that you don't get to a point in five years where you have 100 clips on one bank, that would be a nightmare. So when we're finished working on our set list, make sure that you save it. You can do file, save set list file. We can call this something demo set list show control. I think it's important to you know identify that this is a show control set list so that you don't get them confused. And then in Arena, you're just gonna wanna save the composition as whatever, show control demo. Okay, so we are at the studio now. And as you can see, if we load a song, on the CDJ, this is a CDJ 2000 Nexus 2. It'll appear in Show Controller. So let's go ahead and load this up. Say Cloud Generator. As you can see, as that happened, it loaded on here. And we're loaded up on channel B because it's selected here. Um, you can switch it to A um, or B. I just wanted to you know, take a moment to show you how it works with the real CDJ because we've been using the internal one throughout the rest of the video. But as you can see, if I press play, it's just like pressing play on the internal CDJ. And then as you can see, if I back it up, you can see me backing it up on the screen and on this window here. And because of this, all of the triggers will follow suit as well. So let me go to that song I was just playing. If I go to Arena now, trigger, let's say Cloud Generator for Sempty. And we go ahead and just click play. As you can see, we are now in perfect sync with the CDJ. If I back it up, the visuals that are playing are now perfectly in sync with what I'm doing. The vocals and lyrics are matching perfectly to the song. Cool. So as you can see, a real CDJ is no different from using the integrated built-in one within show control. So it's no different, all of the setup process that we've done, if you don't actually own CDJs, you can still prep your sets in show control and arena to play out. So I mentioned throughout this video that if you are running a show with a VJ, they can manually trigger the master Semti layer manually per song. If you're trying to do this whole setup autonomously with no excess team, which I don't really advise because it's kind of dangerous to not have anybody at front of house in case something goes wrong. But in case that you wanna run everything yourself and you want it to be fully autonomous, there is a setting for that within show control that you can configure. So if you go to utility and you go to global and you go to auto master, if you set this parameter to link, which is the center right here, essentially with this enabled, whenever your CDJ switches master tempo, it'll switch the master Semti channel to the corresponding channel. So if I'm playing a record with this setting on, I press the master tempo button on the song that I want the visuals loaded for, Show Control will automatically trigger the master Semti channel correspondent to that song. So you don't have to worry about having a VJ there to fire off the right song whenever it's time. Again, I don't advise doing this and doing it alone, but if you're touring alone with a low budget and you don't have a dedicated VJ to tour with, this can get you through in a pinch and it's really optimized. So you can control the whole visual show from on stage just by pressing the correspondent master tempo button. And the last thing I wanted to mention is something that's seemingly really obvious, but really easy to overlook if you aren't uh, thinking about it when you're setting all this up. Make sure your max sleep feature is off when you bring the computer on stage. I played a show with my friends Gabriel and Dresden a few weeks ago in Seattle at Q Nightclub, and we brought in this show control configuration, and we couldn't figure out why the screen was going black after 15 minutes. 
And of course, it was my Mac going to sleep because there's no physical input on any of the HID devices like the mouse or the keyboard or the trackpad. Because it's all automated, it's only receiving MIDI and OSC data, which are not keeping the computer awake. So every 30 minutes or something, the screen would go black and the guy, the VJ at front of house, would just have to touch my mouse pad. Make sure that you disable sleep whenever you use this on stage. That is a big mistake that I didn't think about when I was configuring this new laptop for show control. So that is the process of linking CDJs and Resolume via show control. I hope this video is insightful to you and I'm looking forward to all of the awesome, cool, smaller artists that never had this technology in their pocket, seeing what they do with it and, and all of the cool performances that they come up with. If you have an awesome performance video utilizing this or any of the other cool sync live full production stuff that we've discussed on this channel. Make sure to send those in the comment section of this video. I really look forward to seeing them and I'm always inspired by you guys and the creative ways that you use these tools that we present in these videos. If you wanna pick up show control for yourself or any of the other software used in this video, make sure to check out the links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, consider supporting on Patreon. You can check that out down there as well. It's patreon.com slash Julian Gray. Helps me make videos like this. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I try to make videos that I really love and think are inspiring and useful for young musicians. So make sure to subscribe if you're interested in any content in that category. Make sure to give this video a like if you liked it, dislike if you dislike it. Let me know why in the comment section. I'm Julian of Julian Gray Media and I will talk to you in the next one. Make sure to send me those videos.